Right, so hello viewers and welcome to Train Fever. I'm your host, Bibujuchu, and welcome to a new Let's Try video. And today we're taking a look at a transport slash, uh, of course, railroad tycoon game. And apparently this is one of the top selling games on Steam at the moment. I think it's somewhere around the 9th slash 10th place right now. And anyhow, I mean, it's a, it's a fairly innovative game inside the uh, transport slash, um, I guess, a railroad tycoon genre, if you will, there, in my opinion. And overall, it features quite a few interesting concepts. Though, mind you, one thing that I, I wanted to bring attention to inside this video is that this is um, this is being released as a full game. It's right around six hours from the, the initial release here, and the beta build was just updated. So, we're not necessarily just updated. I just downloaded the update, but... um. It, uh, it should be fairly close to what is there in release, nevertheless, and I just wanted to make that distinction that um, this is a full title, it's not an early access title, and I know that we've been covering a lot of those um, early access games in these Let's Try videos in the past. So, um, without a sight, let's start up a new game and let's take a look at some of the options Train Fever uh, offers us here. Um, just covering some of the prominent features here. It features, uh, it, it's, it's not a game based on any grid, it's not a grid system so your trains your your train tracks and all they're not locked onto them I mean the trains are obviously locked on the train tracks but um there yeah it's there's no grid there it's all in 3d um, it's also procedurally generated too so the map uh, you th you of course throw up your your world parameters and the game will give you um, a, a world just pretty much generated right there and in addition to that on top of just the uh, the world generation it features quite a, a, a an in-depth simulation of the little townsfolk and all that, and they're not necessarily, say, stale, one-dimensional guys there. And uh, to add on top of that, it doesn't only procedurally generate these um, maps, it also does the buildings as well. And um, I think you'll notice that uh, pretty soon, as soon as you uh, start the game here. And it's, it's very intriguing overall. So, um, as you might imagine, the world settings are pretty standard. I think we'll do a small-sized map. Um, I've been trying to play with one of the, with, say, some of the more hillier maps, but I think we'll go with a flat one for now today and we'll just go with easy start in the 1850s the game uh, gives you the option of starting as late as the 1950s and overall as time of course increases you get some um, some more different train options and lots of things become unlocked over the ages there in just uh, yeah say how what uh, you know trains uh, you have what type of cars you have and what type of train or tram systems you can build there because um, there there's actually Quite a lot of this uh, town management, where you know town um, transport things that uh, that you have to do as well. So uh, there we go. We've loaded up the game. We have a wonderful uh, map generated now, and I could do this. I can zoom all the way out to get a nice over uh, overarching picture, or alternatively, I can zoom all the way into um, practically street view here. I'm going to zoom in to this river and we can take a look at the scenery around so um despite it being a flat map we still have some very lovely uh, hills inside the background there um typically these maps will come with either a nice river a nice lake or a mixture of two with of course a few mountains if you want them so we have a nice um overarching like yeah bit of a uh, yeah farmland next to these hills nice river here and the lovely town of south shields over here which we can take a look at and overall i'm really digging the uh the graphics the as the aesthetics of the game if you will here just going off of um what it can do really and it gives this um nice vibe to it i, I don't know how to describe it. it might be the word rustic if you will it uh, it reminds me of the game um, banished actually when i just absolutely loved how the towns were put to uh, put together here. So we get this lovely town. This is, of course, all um, generated from a set of textures and decals for the windows, for the textures of the houses and, and the such there, um, with a few, yeah, just pretty much base models, if you will, um, setting up the... Um, the, the the little piece for the house there. So yeah, overall very nice. Um, coming from these towns, these uh, these little settlements here, and these production buildings. For example, I believe this is a logging cap. The 
despite being quite a while away from uh, any source of lungs, it will uh, it will function without you. It's not a it's not a one dimensional thing in that we solely use this um, uh, forestry for say uh, our own purposes. As you can see, the the game is constantly churning out goods by itself. And well, what's happening here is that little virtual people who also are invisible are uh, going to shuttle these goods irregardless of whether or not say we have uh, right, you know they'd probably use our train if we had one uh, or if we had a station nearby though currently they seem to be just chugging their uh, their logs straight into the town perhaps or alternatively because again I mean these um the the AI for the game it's 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 pretty good it'll uh, it'll try to perhaps shuttle them over here to the sawmill on, on its own using the roads available inside the inside the uh, the map here and overall it's a, it's a very fascinating system like that and again, going one step further, and that's uh, that's a common theme inside the game. Uh, the town here also has this, uh, yeah, it has different resident, it has different um, land zones here as well. And these zones will actually be split up into uh, you know high value, low value zones for the little residents here as well. And it looks like South Shields here is a pretty diversified town. It has a few commercial uh, areas spread out. It's got the, the lovely, um, I'd say, yeah, just more or less. Um, park area here and also some um, some industry over here too as well in general yeah the game spits out these absolutely wonderful towns and they are they're functional towns as well mind you so um probably should do something inside the game now and with that said let's uh let's get our basic game plan down so we have three million up uh, inside the bank here listed there and i'm guessing that uh, we should probably set up say a transport network between the towns to transport passengers as that is the easiest way to um to make an early buck inside the game and i think we'll just do that we'll start off and we'll uh yeah i guess we'll build a train station we'll or rather we'll build three here and we'll get these set up in accord with each other and we'll get uh, we'll get some passengers flowing here so um, what I think we'll do is I will place down one right here these um, train stations they come in two forms all uh, I believe yeah I think all transport um, variants come in two forms here um, excluding trams they have the, the 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 resource depots and the passenger stations so those are those are the two forms of stops that you can make um, respectively of course they make uh, rather they they if they they take food or you know resources in general and passengers in general on the other one so that's that not necessarily food there's a lot of different goods inside the game here I think what I'll do is that I'll put one down yeah I think we'll put one station down here and finally, and one one of the things that you may have noticed uh, uh, inside the game so far is that there uh, there's no radiuses uh, present inside these uh, these things that I build here. It's all it's all done without uh, without a grid and without any. Um, any like uh, spheres of influence, if you will, present on any of these buildings, and this is because again, the uh, the game's AI isn't say dumb. It doesn't really. It's not. It's not. Uh, and again, one dimensional like that. It'll try to uh, engage, say trying to figure out where would be like a nice location to put this try over here um but yeah the, the i will determine say it's like you know is this station viable despite the fact that i'm over here inside like the iron ore mine is that area viable for me to go there and to uh, to use it to transport my stuff faster the game will actually you know run those calculations and it's going to try to decide whether or not it um it will do that so with that uh, kept in mind you um it's i'd say i'd say it's a a tad more realistic than say some of the um, some of the other systems out there which is really nice um, going forwards let's build these uh, train stations now and this is where the uh, yeah the building system starts to shine so as you can see what I can do is that I can just um, click on one of these end parts on um, one of these uh, yeah train stations and I can start building off of them and I mean you can of course get into the fine details of doing that into making these elaborate uh, networks and all but I'm just going to do something basic I'm going to make a roundabout circuit between these areas now one of the things that I should note is that in my opinion the game doesn't do uh, well on hilly surfaces with this uh, 3d type of uh, thing uh, it, yeah, it doesn't seem to do that very well. And with that said, what it what it tries to do here is that I can just drag and drop these areas. I think it'll tell me something about the uh, the angle of the overarching um, 
say route here, well perhaps that's something else. Um, but one of the big things that I want to draw attention to was this uh, was this problem right here. Um, the game would try to keep the rail, uh, the yeah, the the railroad lines straight, or as as close as it, as it is to um, to of course being flat on the. On the, uh, the terrain here, but because of how modifiable the terrain is, what will happen is that if you if you build long pieces like this, what will what uh, what will happen over hills and all is that you're more often you're you're likely to make these like large uh, yeah defiles and all like this where you really modify the terrain inside the game. And this this isn't, say, a major problem here. Um, and overall, I mean, if you make these pieces short enough, it uh, it definitely adjusts fairly well, though I think that is one thing that they could perhaps work upon to um, to reduce that level of mic of uh, of trait of uh, you know just just track lane instead of doing say these individual pieces all um, you know slowly and slowly I can just drag this and go all the way across over here let's see whether or not I can yeah that'll make it slightly um, above in elevation but either way I think that'll be fine so we'll get this thing set up and over here I guess what we'll do is um, because these uh, these lines are also quite they're quite finicky with roads as well I think we'll get these two um, portions to line up over here so this will be kind of weird but I think it'll work yeah we'll do um, we'll do something like that overall it's gonna be fairly expensive and again that problem shows up here as well um, yeah there's there's definitely a, a, a small amount of uh, slippage there with like how much you spent on changing the, the, the terrain because that uh, that actually adds up fairly fastly and I'll show you guys a better example of why the um, the terrain problem matters so for example over here we have a nice hill um, I can build a I can build a tunnel through it of course but one of the things is that if I only cut through like uh, say the sides of it what will happen is that you get this great big uh, arch like you know thing going on here where you modify the hill a lot and unfortunately I mean once you lock into uh, one of these positions it's very difficult to get out and once you um, once you alter the terrain, if you delete the tracks, it'll it'll still leave the imprint there. So um, eh, more or less, it's it's a it's a small note on the on the aesthetics. That was it's kind of a big thing if you're spending say a ton of cash on just um, editing T uh, or you know just trying to lay down your tracks there. So. Um, I guess now that we have that covered, we can speed up laying the tracks here and we can make a nice, a lovely bridge here as well. And the game also has a few different types of bridges we can lay and I believe those increase uh, as you advance further through the, uh, the time periods inside the game. Over here, it looks like we have some sort of a collision problem, apparently. I'm going to see whether or not we can perhaps solve that with a different bridge design. Doesn't look like we can though, unfortunately. So uh, let's see, what can we do? What can we do to remove that? Oh. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out what uh, what angle it's saying that this collision problem happens. Occasionally, it's more or less just better to just do this, build a, a short track going in some other direction, and then, um, see whether or not it self-adjusts. So now that it does, that's at least good. Let's see. Try to build in these um, 20 or you know 10 slash 20 grand chunks so that the will give the uh, the game some time to readjust the portions of rail here. No, nope, I don't want to do that. Let's see. No, nope. having some problems here, folks. Unfortunately, there we go. So get this. We drag this all the way over to what is this port? Portland over there. Right, so I think we'll leave that there for now. We'll take a look at Portland. We'll see what is the uh, what what are the conditions over there. And I usually like to build from the stations once you um once you have one bit of track close to them. And over here, let's see what we have to do. So there's a there's a slight hill. And the game's doing a decent job at adjusting here. We're for for the most part it does a decent job at adjusting. Let's see whether or not this um this works out here. No, nope, it's going to um, cut through the hill either way, so I guess we'll let it do its thing. It's not going to be the perfect setup here, but that should be good enough. And I think that 
I think that uh, connects the two, and if not, what I should be able to do here is that should be able to do something like this. Yeah, there we go. So that should also connect. But let's see. Nope, that is going to cause a collision, apparently. There. So get that set up um, over there, and likewise over here. I'm just going to drag this out and see, uh, rather, and hope that it doesn't cost too much here. So put that one layer there, we'll do something like that. Alright, I think that's close enough for us to switch to over here. I'm gonna do pretty much what I did on that side, but I don't think I'll care too much about it this time, and I think we'll just uh, get this to do whatever, really. I have a lot of cash in the reserve, so yeah, we'll just link something up like that. Or this will happen again. Yeah, sometimes the controls will be just kind of like that. This is... Um, this might be actually a good thing, seeing as how we do need a train depot to um, to get the the trains to do their to to work and all. So this is what I think I'll do. I'll make a slight junction here, and I'll put down the depot over here, uh, so that we can launch trains and all there. And that uh, that effectively gets our train network set up here, folks. So now uh, what we can do is uh, we can go to the train depot. We can buy one train, and early on side of the game you have the Spanish Brattle Ban. One is the only one that you can buy, so we'll buy one of those, and we're going to attach a wide variety of different carts to it as well. Um, starting off, we are transporting passengers, so I think what I'll do is that I'll just buy... Let's see, these things have... these things can hold six passengers each, so I think I'll buy perhaps... I, I guess six to start off with. And what I'll do here is that what I can do now is that I can hit the bottom button over here. I can do manage lines now that we have a train, train depot, and network set up. And what I can do now is that I can just queue up our three stations. It'll link them up as a circle like the such there. And well, afterwards we can set the set the, set the train depot and everything inside it to line number one, the red line, our uh, passenger network here. And our train will get started on making its way from those towns to um, to pick up passengers and whatnot. So, um, now that our train is busy uh, buzzing about on the route here, it'll just do its thing. Stopping on, on, inside these towns, I think it has to make an initial stop before each town, before um, passengers start to show up and to do its thing. And this should give us some time to set up these towns further. And what I mean by that is, I mean, while the game of course does have that focus on roads once again, it, um, it has a fairly robust system for setting up, say, um, bus networks and amongst other things here as well. And what I think I'll do here is that I'm just trying to slightly adjust these towns so that it works better for our network, but I don't think that this area will be uh, one of those areas. Um, what I can do here is that I can open up that city uh, land use panel again. I can check out some of the different areas inside the town, you know, where are different things really. And what I want to do here is I want to put one of these um, bus stops and I want to grab one of these and I want to see whether or not I can perhaps put one of the um, the bigger stations over here nearby our um, our central terminal here, where our train station terminal. And what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to see what I can do about setting up a few, um, say, or rather setting up a, a passenger system that'll that'll take people there. So we have uh, we have one tram station on this side of the road going forwards. I think we'll get the. Uh, I think we'll get a second, another line to perhaps pick people up from over here. So I guess uh, the train will enter, it'll go stop over here first, and I think I'll get it to wrap around, make it stop over here. It'll go right around once again, and oh, actually, 
we get it to wrap around like this. And again, there's no radiuses on any of these um, bus stops. The people just automatically will intelligently try to decide uh, whether or not these are perhaps things that they want to use, and they'll decide accordingly. And then, oh, actually, the town is uh, yeah, it's, it's it's growing already. It's doing their own thing, um, irregardless of what we do here. So again, very neat. And what we can do here is that we can jump back into that manage lines system, set up the route here for these uh, different terminals, and we'll get that wrapped around like such. Once we have line two set up over here, what I'm going to do is that I think we'll buy I think we'll buy two stagecoaches because they can only have hold five people each, and I'm going to set both of these things to line two, and they'll just be dispatched. And uh, hopefully we'll see some traffic here soon, and hopefully we'll see some people spawning in Portland, um, getting on the train network working all and uh, being shifted into other neighborhoods and all there so uh, likewise this is a process that we'll have to do for some of these other towns I mean of course these lines that I have here aren't exactly optimal for um, for what I would like them to do but I think they do the job nevertheless and we'll just try to improve upon them as what we did uh, over there. So we want to have a big terminal, seeing as how that's the only stuff that you can, uh, rather that's the only real thing that you can have inside the country here. We'll place those down. We'll get the, um, the bus stops ready. And over here, let's see thinking it has to wrap around into uh, our bus terminal so let's go with perhaps one over here got a nice bright green residential area so I'd imagine that these areas are quite wealthy and I think we'll make a make a stop here we'll put it at the entrance of this this area right here so the people from this street and all the residential areas have access to it there we go and that should cover this area as well and overall let's let's put one let's perhaps do something like uh stop by here i think i'll go through the to the leisure area first to a wrap around like that go through the commercial area and then i think i'll just let it do something like that overall it's kind of sh it's not exactly the best co coverage but i think it'll work so let's get this thing set up we'll go from there bounce over here over here over here and finally over here and yeah that completes the route close it close this and over here let's buy two more of those stage coaches we'll set them all to line numero three and they'll just gradually do its thing so now that we have a few vehicles i think i'll set up um the last town there of, of that self shields there shortly but for now what we can do is uh, now we can fast forwards f through the game we'll let the network do its thing as you can see the um the little buses and all they're being dispatched and they're starting to head towards the different um stalls along the way and would you look at that we already have some people waiting here for us apparently this one person i think it's this fine uh fellow right here and the cart's gonna go around it's gonna go to the nearest uh yeah road junction and the person will be picked up just like that so um, now that we have the, the, the stations set up they'll gradually start to shuttle people uh, to Portland and one of the things that I want to note with uh, rather one of the things that I want to demonstrate with South Shields over here is that even despite the fact that we don't have the um, the whole transport thing going on here the uh, the bus system going on here some of the fine uh, you know villagers of this town right here they they still want to transport the pro they still want transport into the other regions of the map and like I said I mean the game doesn't work on those influential uh, you know circles of influence or anything and these town folk over here have decided evidently this is citizen number 15257 has decided to go to work inside another town in some other uh, portion of the map and it's uh, well they have decided that it's worth utilizing line one here for that exact purpose and they've decided to um, yeah hop along our uh, well route over here to do exactly just that so currently we're not transporting very many passengers gradually of course that will accumulate and that should go for the better and apparently we transport some very influential people seeing as how it's uh, yeah 1850s and all and these people are paying us um, like a few grand to transport them like three grand for five people we're well, no three people right there these guys would have been loaded and would you look at that that is the virtual transport system at work. What are we producing here? We have some oil coming from over here. Um, that's probably going to an oil refinery, some forested areas as well. I believe this is uh, because this 
this is a no this is an oil refinery so in this case yeah oil is coming in here and as soon as one of these blips go in it looks like two blips of uh, goods I believe pop out I think those are goods anyways and I think the goods will then shuttle themselves towards a town and then they cause the town to grow is the uh, is the end goal there so again very very neat very uh, nice to play around with and in general overall very uh, pretty to see in action inside the game and uh, overall I think we'll take a bit of a break here make this a two-part um, let's try video perhaps shortly and uh, maybe where when we continue we'll build off of sh south shields here and I'll see whether or not I can get the uh, the production system here in in gear and we'll see whether or not we can perhaps work that into our network and as well and we'll see whether or not we can transport some goods there so i uh, hope to see you guys there you know be sure to like and subscribe for the part number two and of course videos similar to this one as well um bye bye for now